How's everyone doing? Good. Really? That's it? That's all I get? <laughs> it's late in the day. I know I'm between you and beer, but can we please have a little bit of enthusiasm? How are we doing? <laughs> all right. All right. All right. Cool. So I want to talk about, well, this topic doesn't really explain what I'm going to talk about, but the idea is I'm going to talk about Cordova Simulate. Who here has heard of Cordova Simulate? The people that work for the Cordova team. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. So first of all, a little bit about me. Like Brian said, I'm a writer. Software developer, I present at conferences. I'm currently principal program manager at Microsoft. I'm part of the Azure team working on something called Mobile Center. Have you heard of Mobile Center? The Cordova team, great, thanks. Um, <laughs> and I'm also just kind of accidentally suddenly got ownership for the JavaScript tooling stuff. So the Visual Studio Code for Visual Studio Code extensions for Cordova and React Native. Um, was a contributor for a really long time. I started in 2011, I think. I figured out this year, because my first Phone Gap book came out in 2012. And uh, so I've written a few. So um, I wrote the first book on BlackBerry development. Wow. Yeah, who'd have thunk? Uh, wrote Phone Gap Essentials, which is a very popular book about Phone Gap. People are still buying it, right? Because they see Phone Gap and they think this is the book. And no, it's, that was 2012. Um, got translated to Japanese, no, uh, Chinese. Translated to Korean. How cool is that? And then on a theme, I just started rewriting all my books over and over again to make more money. So <laughs> Patchy Cordova 3. Apache Cordova API cookbook. One of my friends is like, you wrote a cookbook? Yeah, no, not the kind of cookbook you're thinking of. <laughs> and then the last one, Apache Cordova 4, which came out just like a week after Cordova 5 was released. But don't panic. It still covers all the same stuff. So if you want to feed my family, buy some of my books. I also wrote a whole series of magazine articles about all the possible ways to mobilize IBM Lotus Notes and Domino. Anyone? And uh, the, ma the magazine kindly made an anthology of all my articles, plus like two or three others. So that, And then I used to always tell people I'm the only author in the world that's written four books in Apache Cordova. Well, then I met Carrie, and I looked at her profile, and she has four or five, depending on what story she's telling the day. So I had to find something unique about myself so that I can identify myself as the only person in the world that's done something. And so I decided that, so I'm the only author that's written in a book about mobile development and soccer referees. I was a professional soccer referee for 22, 22 years, and that was actually my first book. No longer available, so you can't help me out by buying a copy. So I uh, tempted the demo gods. I, I made a sacrifice this morning to the demo gods, but then I woke up this morning and thought about the order of my presentation, and I thought about changing things around a little bit, and then Carrie, probably to thwart me in my presentation, um, convinced me to move things around. So I'm going to try it and see how this works, okay? If it goes badly, her fault, all right? So, how many of you have heard of Visual Studio Code? How many are using it for your Cordova development? OK, all right. I saw the guy from um, the beer thing earlier, Untapped, or what's it called? Untapped. Untapped. Uh, and he was using Sublime. I'm like, how could you do Ionic development and not use Visual Studio Code? Do you know why? <coughs> the Cordova plugin. So, the, so um, Microsoft created TypeScript. I'll tell you why in a minute. And then we created this plugin for Cordova, which actually also supports Ionic. And so you have this great development environment for building and running your apps. Um, you enable the particular profile you want, and you can actually debug live JavaScript debugging in a Cordova app on device. Kind of cool. Anyways, so there we are. So um, I decided to start with something really interesting about Visual Studio Code that you may or may not know. So actually, two things. So can you guys, you guys can't see that, can you? Ah. Sorry, screen and presentations. All right, let me make that bigger. Can I say that's what she said, or I probably shouldn't do that? No. Okay, I didn't do that then. All right, so um, how many of you know about this? Code space dot? Okay, so if you're using Visual Studio Code and you're in a folder, code space dot, and it launches Visual Studio Code in the current folder. Come on, that's cool, right? Um, it's installed by automatically on Windows, but on uh, Mac OS you have to do something. Do you guys know what that is? So you type install, and it pops up. Whoops, if I spell install correctly. Let's try that again. Well, it's not working, but there should be something here. Oh, yeah, install, yeah, install code, command line, and path. Can you see that? Yep. Anyways, all right, so um, one of the things that we did recently, which isn't my responsibility, but I think it's really cool, is we, so we created TypeScript as a way to help developers be more, be more productive in their coding. So I don't know what you heard about TypeScript, but you know, it's this superset of JavaScript and it en enables typing and so on. But the way the Visual Studio Code team tells the story is that we created it actually to help developers simply be more productive. 
great. And I don't mean by being more productive, I mean cool features in the IDE, because there's a bunch of IDEs and you all love the one that you love, right? But what I learned just literally like a week or two ago, which was pretty cool, was you can go in here in the code. You want to see this bigger, don't you? You see that now? Yep. All right, so if I start a comment and say TS check, what this does is it enables the TypeScript compiler inside uh, Visual Studio Code, even though I'm editing a JavaScript file. Okay, so I'm still in JavaScript. And then as soon as I do that, you'll notice right here, it tells me that this read-only is an error. So before I added this line, this read-only colon false was perfectly acceptable by the compiler or by the, by the application. And so as I start digging into this, I go, okay, well, let's look at define property. And if I look at define property, it has some attributes. So if I click on these attributes, I can see that read-only is not one of the attributes of that, of that object. Okay, so what I do is I come back here and I can go in here and change this to write, writable, and since it's writable, it needs to be true. And so now I've fixed a problem in my JavaScript code using the TypeScript compiler without actually having a TypeScript file. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. All right, all right, all right. I just, I need, I need validation, okay? I just gotta have validation. All right, so if I go down here and look at this ship weight, ship weight greater than 100, okay, does that look like good code to you? Well, I mean, it, that, that seems, I won't say it this time. Is that better, Anish? Okay. You could move up in the front of the room and see it better. So when I worked at BlackBerry, I'd, I'd start a session and everybody would hide in the back of the room, okay? And I would say, hey, everyone come out front, front of the room, and they all ignored me. And then as soon as I started the session, I handed a BlackBerry to everybody in the front row. I can't do that anymore, but. Uh, all right, so anyways, theoretically, I mean, that ship weight greater than 100 looks like a good piece of JavaScript, right? I wrote it, and it makes sense. Well, guess what? It doesn't, because ship weight is a function. And so by adding this to my, to adding that TS check, the TypeScript compiler allowed me to identify a problem. That code would never have run. That conditional would never have evaluated the true, because comparing the a ship weight object to is greater than 100 will always return. Or something, yeah, not what I expected. Make sense? All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna show you before I get into the actual meat of my presentation is TypeScript allows me to have types, right? So I can validate whether my code works or not based upon object types and so on. And uh, so, whoops. So what I wanna do is I'm adding some comment code to my function. And then in my function, I replace this asterisk pull this over so I can get to my stuff here. And if I say string, right, so now I'm, I'm basically, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, decorating my function without modifying the JavaScript code at all, defining the input parameters for the function, and then suddenly, as soon as I do that, it, the TypeScript compiler tells me that trend is not a valid function. Well, yeah, it's not, right? What, what should it be, anyone, anyone? Trim. So anyways, just by adding that TS check and doing a couple quick things, quick things through my code, I've, I've quickly enabled things that were gonna not work correctly. I fixed things that were not gonna work correctly and I never would have known why they weren't working correctly. Okay, so when Microsoft says we wanna make developers more efficient, this is the kind of stuff we're talking about. Is it cool? Yep. Yeah. All right, worth staying until 3.30? Uh, yep. All right. So let's talk about my deck. So this is what I want to talk about. You guys ever heard of something called Ripple? <laughs> for those of you that haven't been around for a while, um, the folks at BlackBerry bought this company called Tiny Hippos. And uh, they had an emulator called Ripple, which allowed you to mimic a wide variety of devices. And they bought them basically to make a better BlackBerry emulator in the browser. Um, and so, yeah, so there it is. And it was really cool because then when you, when you launched it and pointed it at your app, it'd say, are you ready? Are you sure you want to do this? And in kind of a bizarre way. And you can mimic all these different types. And then um, when it ran, it opened up this cool browser window. That's my application running in the middle. And then I have these panels on either side that allowed me to manipulate the code running inside the browser. So just like your native emulator allows you to set device information or set uh, uh, geolocation things and stuff like that, the browser allowed you to do that as well. 
But unfortunately, um, it rarely worked. And I apologize to anyone who's worked on that project. But it rarely worked. I always got crashes like this. It was never out of beta. Um, it was this orphan child that kind of hung around for a while and never really got successful. And then the BlackBerry folks said, hey, let's make it an Apache project. And so they added it to Apache, and it incubated for a while, and then it died a horrible death. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is in the Apache incubator. It was killed 12-6-2015. Uh, Although, uh, let me see here. Anise, are you in here somewhere? Where I don't see your name. Michael Brooks, is Michael here? Mike, you here? Yep, there's Michael right there. He worked on it. Ray Cannon, we spent this weekend with him. Uh, Tim Barnum is the guy that, uh, from Microsoft that worked on this project. He's from Australia right now. He's in Napa. Bad choice for vacations. Wildfires, anyone? Yeah. Too soon. <laughs> All right, so where we are today. So um, the team at Microsoft uh, took the Ripple project. Um, Oh, yeah, Cordova Simulate. So we took Ripple, and uh, we kept parts of it and completely rewrote other parts of it. And the reason why we did that is because um, we wanted to integrate it into Visual Studio Taco. You guys heard of Taco? No, it's not a dinner food. Um, Visual Studio Tools for Apache Cordova. Is that a question? I've heard of it. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> if you guys have any problems with the docs for Visual Studio Taco 2017, don't complain to me, even though I wrote every bit of them. Um, and then also we want to integrate in the Cordova extension. So it's available as part of the Visual Studio tools. It's also available as a command line interface. And I'm going to kind of show you how that works. And the reason for this presentation is because I want to show you how to extend Cordova Simulate to enable it to emulate or simulate your plugins. Well, that's cool, right? I, a lot of feedback's needed here. It's late in the day. I got no caffeine. All right. So time for a demo. Let's make the donuts. All right. So. Um, Oh, damn, I said um. Didn't mean to say um. All right, so I'm going to create a project, and I'm going to kind of show you what I mean. So imagine you're building an application that uses the compass. Larger, Larger really. Good? Good? Yeah. Oh, I got to spell my name right. What? Oh, oh, yeah, no kidding. Typing up here is really hard. All right, what? All right, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm nervous. You notice I'm nervous? PGD. Thank you. All right, so now I'm going to try to create my project. Where is this? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Come on. It's not going to work, is it? All right. Bam. Uh, Do you notice anything weird about the command I used? Those of you who know Cordova? Yeah, no growls. So I'll, ex I'll explain why in a minute. But um, so this is my own node module. So I create demo projects all the time. And instead of typing that, you know, Cordova create, uh, Cordova platform add, Cordova platform add, Cordova plugin add, I just made a node module that does it. I'll point you to it in a minute. I need a joke. I got to wait for this to finish. Anyone? Yes? Your cannibals are eating a clown. What's this? Does this taste funny to you? <laughs> Very nice. You're a good man. If I had a BlackBerry, I'd give you one. <laughs> All right, so this is taking longer than I wanted to. All right, so anyways, while this is doing its stuff, so here I created a thing called Cordova Create. I also did Cordova Make Hooks, Cordova Merges, that kind of automatically make those folder structures for you. It's available there, but it just simplifies the whole process of making, making the file. It's configurable. You just modify JSON file and populate the plugins, the folders, the whatever you want, and it automates the whole thing. You can do the same thing with templates. Yeah, but I didn't write templates. <laughs> Jesse said you can do the same thing with templates, and he's right, but, but my stuff's cooler. All right, so theoretically, I'm done. All right, here we go. So say, for example, I want to run, uh, so I built this app that uses the compass. And if I go here,
do Cordova run and uh, do Cordova run Android since I already have the emulator or the emulator running. Another joke. Someone beside our Yiddish ninja. Anyone? Earlier you said that you used to be an analyst. And you just <laughs> said compass. I'm, I'm wondering if there's something that... Emphasis on the wrong syllable? No, I, actually I used to be a Forrester analyst, but I failed miserably at that. So, oh, cranky, I forgot to put my code in. <sighs> Here I thought I knew what I was doing. Sorry, guys. Come on. All right, so what I, let me put my actual code in there because that probably makes this work a lot better. I am organized, I promise you. So I'm gonna copy my code, and then I'm gonna go here. I did it in events, phone gap day, compass. Actually, when I said compass weird, uh, Jesse, I didn't mean to. All right, so here we go, let's try this again. So there's my code. And now if I go here and run Cordova Android, and I go here, so there's my app. Okay, so I've, I've built my app, and through my testing on devices and so on, I've been able to test my plugin, right? But when I build an application using this plugin, how do I exercise my code and take into account every capability of the plugin API that I'm testing? So your options are to mock up the you know hack up the code in the plugin to put it in demo mode so that you can respond in the appropriate way regardless whether it's an emulator device or whatever um, but that doesn't necessarily work and if I go over here there's this little side window that gives me all sorts of options for emulating things well guess what's not there somebody say compass, compass. yeah the compass isn't there so I'm, I'm out of luck here with regards to how to um, to make this work okay and so um, what what we did was with Cordova emulate is actually I'll do it here, do it this way. So what I can do is I can say I want to debug a Cordova project, cool as that, and then I can say I want to run, simulate Android in browser, and then what happens is VS Code runs the browser build of this, runs the browser build of this. Huh, what happened, anyone? Well, okay. It, try Vim. It hates me. <laughs> You're not in the right directory with the open code. I should be. I'm not. Why am I not in the right directory? All right, never mind. Anyways, what should have happened was, boy, I'm just failing miserably here, aren't I? This isn't being recorded, is it? <laughs> All right. So what, what should have happened was um, this little window opened up. So here's my Compass application. And then here's this simulation window. And, oh, I know why it's not working. Crikey. No, I'm not Australian. I just say crikey a lot. It's easier than me saying the F word. I need to add the plugin to the project, don't I? Um, but -da -da -da. Whoops. I did practice this, I promise. So now I'm adding the Compass project or plugin to the project. And then I go in and I emulate this guy. And then now, in this pane that pops up, here is my compass orientation. All right, so if I go over here to my app, and these are my earlier versions of this, so uh, if I go to my app, oh, it's not gonna work. Dang it. I made a mistake. I commented out some code that I didn't, boy, those demigods are mad at me today. I made a sacrifice. Let's try this one last time. So if I go to my project and I uncomment out that code that I hid, well, anyways, that's not gonna work. Ah, oh, there it is, okay, cool. So if I grab this, and I uncomment it, now when I look at my app, 
There's buttons. So live reload is there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, anyways, I'm going to move on because I'm going to run out of time. But basically, uh, what I have is this window that now adds a compass orientation, and I can click here, it automatically passes it to the code and goes from there. All right? So the demo would have been much better, but it's not. So anyways, so that's, that's basically it. All right, so now uh, back here, so I want to do another example, and I'm going to try to do this one better. So I, I created my own custom plugin. It's a plugin I did for one of my books, and it uses the carrier APIs, so I can determine what carrier the wireless device is on. And then I also did an API function that gets um, country code, okay? So I built my own custom project. So I'm gonna build my project, and you need to remind me to add my plugins. Someone say add your plugins, John. All right. Pardon me? That was Sublime. Shh, don't tell anybody. So I use both. <laughs> Jesse got me. <laughs> He's been waiting since I made fun of him about my code versus his code, but uh, here we go. He got me. All right. I'm good time-wise, guys, so don't worry. Don't worry about me finishing in a rush. I promise I'm good. Third joke. What do you get with a cross of rhinoceros and an elephant? Elephino? I'll explain it later. Ah. So now I'm going to add my carrier plugin. Um, it's up on GitHub or it's up on npmjs.org, so you can have it. Uh, but basically, now I've got my thing ready. And then what I'm going to do is um, I already have the simulation code in here, so I'm going to go in and whack this. Um, and then I'm going to put it back in. And you'll understand why in a second. So what you do is you add to your project in your source folder a, project, a folder called simulation. Okay? And I'm going to delete that because I, I hate it. And then I'm going to, oops, and then I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go there, and I'm going to grab that folder, and I'm going to copy it over. There is a method to my madness, I promise. All right, so now I have my source folder. I'm going to add this emulation folder to this. And then basically, when I run this thing, I can actually create a UI that I can use to simulate things within my, my plugin. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I go here into my plugins folder, com.johnworker.carrier, into my simulation folder, the first thing you find is there's an HTML file that contains the form that I'm going to use in that Cordova simulate window to create the UI I need to simulate. In this case, what we've done is we've created these things called Cordova panels, Cordova labels, Cordova combos, which are just part of the style sheets and so on that we create for the, visual, for the Cordova simulate. Um, there is no listing that I know of that shows you where all those are, what they all of them are, but you just basically go to the Cordova Simulate project, download it, and in the plugins folder are the source code for all of the core Cordova plugins. Because when we created Cordova Simulate, we then added Cordova Simulate plug plugin capabilities to all of the Cordova plugins that were core. Okay? But basically here what I have is I have two combo boxes. I have one called Carrier, what's it called? It's called uh, Carrier Select, and I just plunked in a couple carrier names. And then I have another one called uh, da, 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 Country Code Select that has some of those, right? So if I go over here, for example, ah. what? Could someone come up here and type for me? I spell it right? I did spell it right. Okay. So now when I go into my emulator and I run this bad boy, come on. What happened? Here we go. Still run it. There we go. Ah. What did I forget to do? What did I forget to do, people? Copy the code over, yeah. Um, da, 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 da. I want, 
That's not the one I want. I want this guy. So here's the source code for my project that I actually need. And so I'm going to go here. Ah, ah, stop. Carrier, go into the www folder. I'm going to delete that stuff. Hey, by the way, thanks a lot for reminding me to uh, paste my code in here. It, it is all your fault. You know that, right? It's not mine. I'm not responsible for what happens during this presentation. Oh, wait. Yeah, I am. All right, so here's, here's my plugin. You guys rec you recognize the UI, Brian? It's top code. Who uses top code? Who uses top code? <laughs> Never mind. All right, so anyways, when I run this, I get carrier, carrier Android. And then when I do country code, I get uh, US. So at least the US part works. Well, so if I built an application that, that I want to act differently based upon the results from this call to the plugin, it's not going to work. So if I've coded specific things for AT&T, not going to work because the emulator returns Android. Okay. So if I'm building an international app, an app that runs anywhere, I'd have to physically get each device, and it's a nightmare. So anyway, so I did that. So now, um, since I've added that UI, I now have a UI that gives me what I need from a, a UI standpoint to simulate both carriers and country codes. Okay. So then in the sim host file, and by the way, the, the documentation for Cordova Simulate shows um, or describes each of these files. There's these files, and there's even others you can add to get different capabilities. So just study the existing plugins to see how it works, because that's the only documentation you're going to get. But basically here, in the initialize function, this gets defined, or this gets executed when the, the UI initiates. And here, I just basically get pointers to each of the different uh, drop-down fields, and I throw something to the console when I change the values. But what you'll see when you look at the example plugins that Microsoft built is they create an object that's global to this component. And then every time you change the drop downs, it changes the properties on the object. And then when it comes time to call the API, we just return that object, right? Well, I didn't do that because I'm lazy. But anyways, you would do that here. And then the last thing you do is you have a sim host handlers function. And in this, basically, you you create a service, which is basically your, your um, plugin name. And then for the service, you define each of the methods that you want to respond to. And then in those methods, like I said, in the ones you'll see in the source, they just return the object they've built behind the scenes. For my code, when, you, when I call get care your name, I basically go out to the UI, pull the value from the current dropdown field, and return it. Okay. So now, if I emulate this bad boy, whoops, simulate. Simulate Android. Did I spell that right, Jesse? Yep. OK, good. Whew. All right, so now when I simulate Android, when I go here, there's my UI. Recognize the carriers. Uh-huh, huh And if I go to my carrier demo, AT&T. All right, thank you, thank you. Send money. So if I change this to Mexico, and I go back here in country code, it's now Mexico. Nice. Okay. So the idea is, when you think big picture about your plugins, you have your test that you use to test the plugins, and then your customers have to figure out how to mock up your plugin to test all the variants in their program. Adding support for Cordova Simulate to your public pl plugins solves that problem completely. But think about it. What have I done? I've tested the working use case. I've tested the scenario where I've called the API and the API returned a value. Is that valuable big picture for a large application in public? Someone say no. no. OK, yeah, no. Because I, I have to test failure situations as well. All right, I got a solution. So don't look at this editor that I'm using because uh, I'm not supposed to be using it. Uh, just kidding, Microsoft doesn't care. Don't look at this code yet. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. So if I go into my, yeah, yeah, close. If I go into my panels application or panels file, and at the bottom of this bad boy, if I add in some code. So in this case, what I did was I added a, a panel row with some content that describes it, and then I added a checkbox, and the checkbox is, is error. 
Okay, so it's a is error function. And then now, if I copy this code, don't look, don't look, don't look, I'm not ready to show it to you. If I come over here into my handler, oops, no, in my, yeah, in my handler. So then in my code, if I go here, and again, this is kind of oversimplified, but I'm trying to make a point, all right? And then if I copy it again and come down here, so I've great, basically created an if condition that checks to see if that checkbox is checked. And if it is, I call the error callback. And I pass in whatever error object I want. And then um, otherwise, I call the regular one. So now, if I save this, now I mentioned that um, I, said, I said um again, whoever's keeping track. I mentioned that it does live reload. I'm pretty sure it's not going to pick up the change to the plugin, so I'm going to close that window, and then I'm going to do it again. So now, when I go in here, there's an extra. Oh, by the way, you can customize these panels. You should be able to move that. Uh, now, if I check this error condition checkbox, and I go back into my app, and I hit carrier name, it's actually going to return the error function. Okay, so now what I have with the appropriate test for my plugins and the appropriate Cordova simulate, I've given my end users everything they need to be able to test the simulator, the plugin end to end. Cool? We're, we're, oh, that's no, tough for me. It's, it's the other guys, but we're, we're staying till 3:30. Okay. All right. Is it, well, I mean, the procession started at 3:30. Jeez. <laughs> Anyways. So, uh, so that's it. So that's basically it. This is the, the project is open source. Do I have any more code? Yeah. So the project's open source. It's maintained by Microsoft. Uh, if you see something that needs to be added, you know, we accept pull requests. But at the end of the day, what I'd like to have as a call to action is that when you're out there building these plugins and so on, um, you know, don't make your users mock up stuff. Just hand them the simulation capability because you more than anybody else knows what needs to happen in this scenario, and then give your users complete whatever. Oh, by the way, I'm not, I'm not hiding my email addresses. There they are. No. Any questions? Really? All right, give it up for John. Oh, see, I was going to wait like two more minutes before they said it. <laughs>